Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to implement the axis of rotation tool to your codes in MATLAB. So this is going to be another one of those videos that we're not really creating any 3D object, but we are more or less building the tools that we will need for future 3D objects and more complex ones. MATLAB already has a built-in function that does this. You can just type ROTX in the angle and it does the same thing we're going to do now in just one line. The only thing is that you have to download a whole module for this in order to use this uh, built-in function and I don't want to do that so because I don't I only want to use this portion of the module uh, I might as well just create it and make a function myself so I'm going to be teaching you that how to create a function and call that function whenever you are going to need to rotate a cross-section or a point in your geometry. Since we are dealing with 3D geometries, I'm going to skip the two-dimensional part of the rotation matrix and go straight for the three-dimensional one right here. You can see that we have a rotation matrix for X, Y, and Z. That, is that means that we're going to use a different one depending on which axis we want the geometry to be rotated. I will not go over the derivation of these uh, expressions because it's really easy and I think that you would get a better explanation if you look for somewhere else. I'll just uh, go over this more or less to show you what the rotation matrix does and I apologize for the poor drawing skills. So in the case that we want to rotate this point that is located at x, y and we want to rotate it by an angle phi, what we are looking for with the rotation uh, matrix is to calculate what the new x and new y would be of that point. So this is the rotation matrix that's say around the c axis, right? And this one is going to be, in this case, it's going to be a 2x2 two two because we're in two, in two dimensions, right? So it's 2x2, two two, and this is going to be multiplied by uh, x and y, which is going to be a 2x... So since these two are the same, that means that we can cross-multiply them, and the result is going to be a 2x1. So this is going to be equal to 2x1, which is going to be x and y. So for 3D is the same thing, in this case this one is going to be a 3x3, three three, this one is going to be a 3x1, and the result is going to be a 3x1, just we add here a C prime. And that's how we get them, that, that's how, but we don't have to do any of these calculations, MATLAB is going to do them for us, but just to keep in mind that this is what the rotation matrix is going to do. Alright, so I think that's pretty much it, let's go to MATLAB. Okay, so first I'm going to create a reference point, which is the one that we're going to use to test that we're doing everything correctly. It's going to be at 1, 1, 1. This is going to be x, y, and z. Okay, now I want to plot that point, because I want to see where it is, where it is located at the Cartesian plane. So I'm going to use the plot3 function. Uh, plot3, not plot2. <laughs> um, it's going to be ref point is going to be the x value first then we can just copy this and I'm going to the markers are going to be black circles yeah but this one doesn't tell us much I'm, I'm going to uh, also plot the origin using the function that the function plot origin that we created on the last video if you haven't seen that one and you're interested in doing this the link is in the video the description of this video but basically all you have to do is sorry do that before this plot origin here now i'm going to do it for a range of negative 5 negative 5 and negative 5 and the origin is going to be located at 0 0 and 0 right let's see also axis off so now let's say that we want to rotate the point along the red axis, which is the x-axis, 90 degrees. So we are going to have it at this side over here. Now let's start writing the rotation matrix. Rotation, rotation matrix, and let's first uh, make a test. So let's see. Let's first rotate it along the, around the x-axis. So we're going to copy this. Right, so here is the, the rotation matrix around the x-axis. Now we're going to carry a test operation. We're going to see if this works. So we're going to call that the new point is equal to the rotation matrix times the reference uh, point. 
and then we're going to plot this in the exact same way that we plotted the reference point. Okay, so here's how we're going to plot the new point. Um, it's the same thing we did for the reference point. I'm also going to use a black marker, but I'm going to make the marker be filled so we can differentiate between them. Oh, here, I'm sorry, I forgot to add a, add an angle of rotation. So I'm going to define angle here. So angle is going to be equal to 90. I think this has to be in in uh, radians, I think. Let's see. Okay, let's check the plot. Right, so remember that the red axis is the x1, and you can see that the plot moved, uh, uh, the point moved counterclockwise 90 degrees. You can see that it's at the same distance away from the y, from, from the c axis and the, on the y-axis is the same distance yeah, in, in the x-direction as well so yeah the, the code seems to be working let's try another l let's try another value so we know that because the the coordinates for this point is 1 1 1 we know that from any uh, axis the angle is going to be 45 so if I uh, rotate this uh, point by 45 degrees it should be parallel to the c-axis right so let's see it's going to be 4 Yeah, it looks parallel enough to me, <laughs> right? So it is working, right? So that's basically it. Instead of copying and pasting this expression every time I want to use a rotation matrix, what I'm going to do is just create a function where the code the, where I'm going to call from this function to use the expression that I want every time that I'm needing it. So I don't need to type this because this is really uh, time consuming to do. So what I'm going to do is start uh, first write a function at the bottom of this file. So I'm going to start with the function like that. The output that I'm going to get is the rotation matrix. So I'm going to call it rotation matrix. It's going to be equal to, and here I need to give the my, my function, I need to give it a name. So I'm going to call it the same rotation matrix, all right? And the arguments that it's going to take, well, the first argument is going to be a type, which is just going to represent whether we want the x, y, or z axis, and then the angle. Okay, so since the trigonometric functions in MATLAB by default uh, calculate radians, and radians are kind of difficult to use when you are not talking about 45, 90 degrees. Like, let's say if you want a 37, how you write that in radians. So what I'm going to do is make so this function accepts uh, only degrees, and then inside the function we transform them to radians. So angle is going to be equal to angle times 2 times pi over 360. Okay, that way we fix that. We don't have to worry about radians anymore. We, we are just only handling uh, degrees, I'm sorry. And now I'm going to use an if statement to check for the type that we want and select a rotation matrix depending on the, on, on the type like this. So you should have something like this and then Last one is going to be just check that the uh, type input is correct. So else, if uh, the input here for type is neither x, y, or z, we're going to tell the program to print invalid input for type. And we close that. Okay, so that's the, the rotation matrix function. Let's test that if it works by, instead of having here our matrix, let's delete this. And let's use the function we just created. So rotation matrix. The first input it was going to be the type. So let's say for X and then the angle. So 45. So if everything is correct, then I didn't make any mistakes, which I might have. We should get the exact same thing and we got the exact same thing so that means that this works let's try with z now you can see that it is rotated 45 degrees uh in this axis of rotation so it's rotating in the x y plane okay perfect so this is working now let's test something more complex now let's see if this is going to work for the original purpose that i'm writing this for which is rotating whole cross sections so i am going to comment i'm going to comment all of this out and also this Okay, so I have created a circle. I have defined the radius, the number of nodes that is going to make the perimeter of the circle, 
is going to be the vector with the angular values for each of these nodes. Here are the z values, the y values, and then x is just going to be the position of these values. The first cross section is going to be along the x axis, so all the values are going to be zero. Here you can see the cross section. All right, so now I want to rotate this cross section around the z axis 90 degrees. Let's see. So I'm going to create a new variable called new circle, which is going to be equal to the rotation, sorry, the rotation matrix around C 90 degrees, and it's going to be times X, Y, and C. And then I'm going to plot that. Like that. And run. Alright, perfect. So the code is working perfectly. Now all now we can just package this in its own file and make it a function. And then we can call it whenever we want. So I have already done that. I used that uh, MATLAB script, not the live script. And it's the same thing. I just copied it and pasted it here. And you just have to have this file in the directory uh, where you're working with your code and you can call this anytime. You don't have to type the whole expression every time you're going to need it. All you have to do is keep this file in your directory and that's it. So I hope that this video was helpful to you. I'm going to be using this in the following videos. I think you can guess what the next uh, 3D geometries are going to be. And if you're interested in creating other 3D geometries, I have a whole playlist on the description of this video, as well as how to export them for 3D printing, CFD, etc. So yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the description of this video. Bye.